Uh, thank you. Can you expand on the Holy Spirit as distinct from Jesus Christ and God within the Trinity? Yes, I'll try. Uh, that's what it takes 200 pages in the book to try to unravel, but <laughs> let me just say a few little good things, I hope. All right. Remember I said the Holy Spirit, the, the metaphors used are always dynamic metaphors, moving metaphors, flow metaphors. Uh, the Holy Spirit is like the glue, the goodness glue, I call it in my book, Immortal Diamond, that connects everything that keeps everything connected. Really, the state of sin, and it is a state more than an action, is when you disconnect. We know this from mass murderers. They're always disconnected people, you know? And we were told, I bet you were told, like me, that our job was to be correct. No, your job is to be connected. That's all. <laughs> Just stay connected. Stay, if in the beginning was the relationship, you will know God as long as you stay in relationship with the flower in front of you, with the blue sky above you, with your wife, with your children. Don't disconnect. When you disconnect, you're in the state of sin. And at that point, you will end up doing a lot of stupid things. When you do actions that we would call sinful, let's just be very traditional, right? I would be willing to bet if I could be your spiritual director or your confessor. At that moment when you did something really stupid, you were unconscious. You were. When you're conscious, you'll always love. You'll always love. When you're unconscious, you will do cruel things, rude things, deceitful things, lustful things. You're always unconscious. So... Uh, I hope this helps you understand that the spirit, and I said it real quickly, the spirit and consciousness for me are the same thing, and love. You, you can use those three words interchangeably, interchangeably, and I can prove that with orthodox theology, all right? <laughs> They're the same thing. So Jesus is the physical manifestation. You always have to deal with physicality. When the word became flesh, you know, so that's why in the end there will only be Christ loving himself when the whole physical universe recognizes itself in one another, when all of you. So that's why in the Christian world we rightly say we are the body of Christ. Yeah, that's correct. And then as you so beautifully did this morning, I was able to celebrate with two of your Eucharist. Augustine says this so well. We feed you the body of Christ so this mystery of incarnation doesn't just move to the personal level, it moves to the elemental level, symbolized in bread and wine. That even the elemental universe is the body of Christ. Oh my God, I know you're going to call me a pantheist. No, that's Christianity. <laughs> that's Christianity. That's incarnational religion which is rightly called panentheism, God in all things, not God is all things. So make that distinction. That'll please your pastors, all right? I'm not teaching pantheism, but I am saying what the gospel clearly proclaims, that God is in all things. So Christ is all, always the mystery of physicality, enfleshment, embodiment, materiality. The Spirit is the goodness glue that keeps everything connected. The Father is the transpersonal source out of which all this love flows and returns. So that's the best I can do for now. Okay. That was great. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah.